Hey there, welcome back. We're going to take this photo that I have on screen and we're going to apply it to this metal sheet. This is a dye sublimation process and the aluminum sheet has a special coating on it. And you've probably seen this with lots of online labs where you can get amazing looking prints on metal. And this has a little bit of a textured surface too, so that's going to be interesting to see how that handles it. But what I need to do, the first thing is to set up my heat press because that has to heat up a little bit. And so as we're going through all of our process, I just want to be able to make sure that thing is ready to go. I need to set it for the right amount of tension with how thick this is. So that's what we're going to do first. So it's not powered up yet. All I'm going to do is swing it off to the side and I've got this anti-stick. There we go. Got this anti-stick item that I will go ahead and slide it underneath. This is a 25 inch by 20 inch heat bed and I just love it because this panel is 24 inches by 16 inches. It's going to be a nice big print. But again, all I'm doing right now is going to get it set for doing the right amount of pressure on that thin little stock there. And right now I have a feeling this is too high. Totally too high. That's not even touching. So we're going to do that a few times. Still way too loose. Oh, and now we're, oh yeah, that feels real good. I'm going to do just a little bit more. And the device actually has a little bit of a rating. It'll tell me how how str how strong that force is when I turn it on. So now let's do that. Come on, bring it in here, son. So we can see right now it's 69 degrees, but we have this platen pressure and that hopefully will actually change. There we go. It's a platen pressure of four, which is the top amount. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to let it sit here and heat up. It needs to be 400 degrees and it's going to go for about a minute and a half once it's all done and ready to cook on there. But let's get that image ready to go and ready to cook on there. So I'm in the computer now. I've got this image from Unalaska Island up there on the Aleutian chain and I need to size it first. So this thing is 24 by 16, but I need to make it just a little bit larger so that when it prints out, I have a little bit of wiggle room. And this is an image that definitely affords me a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to come over here, hit C on the keyboard, which should bring up prop tool. I'm going to go to width times height times resolution. And since that's 24 inches, I want to do about a quarter inch larger. So I'm going to go 24.25. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do 16.25. And I'm going to run this at 300 pixels per inch. All right, so that's pretty much a perfect, I don't need to hardly crop it at all. It's perfectly sized right there. So let's just go ahead and take this and I hit return again and something happened here. Take a look what I did. I did 24.25 pixels instead of inches. And that happens every once in a while. We wanna make sure we type in inches. So let's get in inches. And now let's take that crop and there we have it. Command zero so it fits all in screen. Now it got a little bit larger on screen as I did that. So that means that this is a little bit more information than what I actually have in the file. So it interpolated a little bit and enlarged the image a little bit according to what the original pixels were. I shot this camera on a Sony a6400, which is 24 megapixels at 300 pixels per inch. It's a little bit, this is adding a little bit more information, but that's all right. It's still gonna look really good. So let's go ahead and get this thing printed, but I want to also, I'm going to zoom in a little bit 
the biggest thing I want to do, I'm just analyzing the edge to see if I need to do any sharpening. It seems to be okay for what I need. And so I'm going to be just fine with it, especially because this material has a little bit of a texture to it. Sharpening isn't going to help a whole lot and it's going to be up on the wall. So when people are looking at it, they're not going to get right up in its face so that they can see all the nitty gritty details. I just want to be able to have something that makes sure it, I just want to make sure it doesn't doesn't look gross. All right, we are ready to print to the transfer paper. So let's do that now. Command P. And I need to set up a special size, a custom size paper for this. So I'm going to do a custom size and I'm going to run this. I think I'm just going to run it at around a little bit larger. So I'm going to do 25 Oops, I'm going to do 25 by 17. That'll take care of everything. And then I just want to make sure I do this. 25, 17. And then I hit OK here. And then I come down here and go down here to printer settings. Oh, first off, of course, we want to make sure we're going to the right printer. This is the Epson SC. F570. I'll give you a link in the description so you can see Epson's specific description on this printer. It is a dye sublimation printer, very specialized process. It's not your standard inkjet printer. It is an inkjet printer, but it's a very specialized ink. All right, so it says paper size for some reason here, US letter. That is obviously wrong. So what we want to do is we're going to see here. Okay. It looks like it's picking it up here, but it says output size letter. What is going on with that? We need to fix that big time. So fit short side to roll paper width, fit long side to roll paper width. We're going to do short side. There it is. And now we've got it coming the way we need it. All right. Paper source. Roll paper, most definitely 24 inch is the roll paper width. Yes, this is the thing that is going to be the most important as it relates to the type of color we get out, the quality of the color we get out. I have done some tests on this. I've just not printed this large yet. Even though this is a rigid material, the textile does give me deeper blacks and a much better color richness and rendition. So I really like being able to do that. And I'm going to leave this as the color adjustment off because I'm going to have Photoshop manage the color adjustment. All right, so let's see how this works for us. Hit the save button. Go along like that. Photoshop manages color. And then we're going to take this and we're going to go to textile. Here we are. And it's interesting how that preview really adjusted that to make it look lighter. But in the test I did yesterday, textile definitely looked a lot better. So I'm not going to trust the preview here. I'm going to trust the work that I did yesterday. All right. And let's see how this goes. We're going to hit, go ahead and hit print. So it's printing now. And it seems to have enlarged a little bit. I'm not sure exactly What's going on? This should be 17 inches across or 16 inches across. And it seems to have gotten significantly larger. Because I did not tell it to expand to fit. At least I didn't think I did. So I'm going to cancel this print job. Oh, I see what it was doing. It was printing it widthwise, but I need it to be 24 and a quarter inches. This paper is only 25 inches wide. So this was not going to be big enough to fit on our panel. So that's too small to fit on the panel. It needs to be rotated. So I have some kind of problem going on here. So let's work with this a little bit and see what we can do. I'm going to modify this item. So my width is 17 and my height is 25. 
and let's come back down here to this item and see it still says output side 24 size 24 by 35 that that should not be the case I will specify size width length there it is there we are that looks like it should looks like we're gonna get the the size we expect now so basically what we have is user error due to the fact that I've never run this size before on this printer so here we are Let's hit that again we're still on our textile all right here we go let us hit the print button all right it is now coming out once again much better looking quality that one it had expanded it way too large this looks nice photographic quality all right that's ready to go but i seem to have some power issues on the heat press so i still need to figure those out we'll be right back as soon as i figure that out so i've got the device back and running and i had checked everything i got my multimeter out I was checking the cord I had made, I should say the socket, I had made this pigtail to accommodate the cord for the device, and everything was coming out fine. No circuit breakers had busted or whatever, tripped. <laughs> There's a little circuit breaker right under here, the little, little device there that had popped. And so I reset that and everything is back to normal. We're at 395 degrees, that is hot enough. We're at our minute 15 or so. Uh, I think we're gonna probably want to increase that a little bit. We'll go a minute 20. And now it's time to get the paper onto the board, onto the panel. So I've got my cart over here and I've got a blank piece of paper, large, nice, big parent sheet of paper. I need to trim this out just a little bit. So I'm going to take off this portion. And then after that, I'll go ahead and get it trip get it mounted to the board to the panel itself one thing we definitely want to be thinking about too is we just want no dust if at all possible on any of this i see one there a little something got on there so I'm just going to take a lens cloth that I have yet to put an image on. It happens to be that way anyway. There we are. And then just take a quick look at this, make sure no dust settled on it. One thing that is automatic in the printing process, it has a thing I it's checked, a little box checked to mirror the image. And so this is reversed. And of course, it's going to re-reverse when it goes onto the panel. So I've got a little bit of an overlap, you can see here, all around the panel. So I have a little bit of wiggle room. And now I'm going to use this heat, not, what is the word, resistant, I guess, durable. It doesn't have problems with the heat like other tapes would have. Okay, now I need to transfer this over to the heater, but I also want this piece of paper down on the heater. So let's do that. So I turn this to the side. I'm gonna put this paper down because I have the overlap with the image. And this overlap will print on the bed here and I don't want that to happen. So by putting this paper down, I'm gonna catch that excess ink.
And here it goes. The first time I've done a big panel like this, so I'm kind of excited. We've got the platen pressure at four, which is what we want, and we've got a minute and 10 seconds left to go. When this is done, I'm gonna carefully transfer it to my cart. I'll take it over to my big table over there and I'll peel it off. Well, as they say, testing is always good. Let's take a look at the results. The center of the panel is phenomenal. I love it. As we come over here, you can see how it kind of is fading a little bit out here on the periphery. And that is what I was hoping would not happen at all. Up here, it looks really good. But on this corner, and then on this corner here, it's a little less faded as compared to that corner, but this is not very good. And as we look at the transfer paper, we can see we have a lot of, a lot of ink left behind, whereas up here it gets really thin, and then a lot of ink left behind here as well. So that basically means I need a little bit more pressure on it. The color where the pressure was good is phenomenal. I love it. But I gotta figure something out to get even pressure all the way across. And that's why I bought that new heat press because I needed something that would be more evenly applied. I've got other heat presses that are 16 by 20 in size and they don't evenly apply because they're clamshell. And this, I still have other things going on. So I need to figure out how to solve that problem of even pressure. I gotta get it so it's even pressure all the way across. Now I do have larger panels. They're thicker, much, much thicker. And maybe those will have a better chance because of just the fact that they're a lot thicker, but also they don't go across the entire width of the, of the item, of the heat press. So yeah, this is a little bit of a disappointment. I forget exactly how much these cost per panel. I'll put the price up here on a per panel cost. And we can see why this is a bit of a disappointment. Now you might think too, can't you just press that again? Well, certainly I can, but the registration, I'll never get that matched. And that's gonna be problematic for sure. All right, so I'm going to look into some options here and hopefully come up with a solution that will help me achieve the results I need to achieve. I'll be back when I get that solution. I got it to work. I'm a very happy camper. Let's take a look at the details. On this corner, looks really good as I come all the way across. And then I've got really good, rich detail in this corner as well. Really wonderful, rich detail throughout. Beautiful color. Everything is just absolutely coming together for it. It just looks really good and I'm very excited. I now need to put the mount on the back so I can hang it on a wall I'll do that in a second, but let me show you what I did to, I guess, kind of sort of overcome this challenge, overcome this little issue. On the heater itself, what I ended up doing, let's swing this back around. We've seen here where when I put the platen down, I can get a platen pressure reading. This actually can go to a number five, and so I just tightened the wheel a little bit 
so I could get to a number five. Now, what was interesting, when I put, put it down, it said five, and then a, a few seconds into it, it switched to four. So I know I had a little more pressure on there than I had last time because it started out at five. But the biggest thing that I changed on this whole process was on the bed here, I pushed the, the print back a little bit so that it favored closer to the back edge here. And it left probably about three to four inches, about probably three inches or so on the front edge here. But then you can see these white items that I have coming on here. These are standard cover weight pieces of material, pieces of paper. And what I ended up doing was it's three thicknesses thick building up. So here is one thickness thick. Then we go to two thicknesses thick and then three thicknesses thick. And then I flipped that over and placed it on here. And what that allowed it to do was to increase the amount of pressure out here on the edges. And I did it on this side as well. And then when that thing came across, and of course you have the metal panel in there, and you pull this down and you get that started, it just makes this have a little bit of an extra even pressure because without it, contact is made here in the center first. And then we have, just when I have very little pressure, I can see that contact is made here first and then no contact is out here. It's about a half a millimeter off. And so I built up with three thicknesses of cover weight so I could make up for that about a half a millimeter off on the measurement. So now I need to come over here to the table and I'm going to put on that mount item so I can actually hang it on the wall. So let's do that now and then we will be finished up. So I've got this paper to protect the print from the work surface because I'm going to have to flip it over. <laughs> that is just so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Very excited. And so I have this MDF board that has these keyhole items for hanging and it's going to just mount. I have these strips I take off and I just pop it on the back but I want to get it nice and centered and everything. So I'm gonna actually measure it and all that good stuff. So this is 24 inches wide and this is nice. It is uh, 12 inches wide. So that means I just need to measure, well, let's do it a little more up this way, six inches. a little hard to see that pencil on the aluminum. All right, and then it is nine inches, and this of course was 16, all right. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches left. So if I put it maybe three inches down, that leaves four inches on the bottom, that should be all right. So I'm just gonna do one, here at four inches. So I'll line it up for these two to be square, line it here for the bottom, and just to make sure, yes, this is the top, all right? So that's the top, it's gonna to go on just like that. This almost doesn't seem like enough mount tape. Of course, I can always put more on there should it fall off or if I ever wanted to be extra sure and secure in what it's doing. All right, so lining here on the edge, getting it four inches off the bottom. And now as I pick it up, of course, it does just fine. And now it is complete. Loving it. I wonder who's going to get this for Christmas, or maybe it'll just go in my office. 
anyway. Very, very sweet. All right, so thank you for joining me on this video. This is actually also the December image of the month. I'm gonna show you what that is right here where I have a print of the month that I release. Make sure you're on my email list. And if you are on my email list, which is going to be, the link is gonna be down below so you can get that in the description. You'll be able to have the notification every month with what the new print of the month is. Now the print of the month is not a metal print. It is a paper print. It's just this photograph is going to be the print of the month for the month of December 2023. All right, and again, thanks so much for being here. Love printing, love getting out shooting, love sharing it with you. Make sure you hit that subscribe. Love to hit the like, and also please leave a comment. Would love to hear your thoughts, and maybe you've got some experience printing to metal. Maybe you've got some experience printing to other things that I need to get myself into as well. Always love diving into these types of things with you. Until next time, God bless, and happy shooting.